Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is so good to just be joined with you once again. Welcome to living in his image on purpose. I, I just really do believe, as I've said countless times before, that living um, in Christ is anything but accidental. It, it, it's got to be on purpose. And, and I just really believe that this is the day and the time that we as the people of God must really begin to know and understand how we must live in the midst of this world, man. This this world has so much darkness and there's, there's so many, so many obvious traps. And then there is also some subtle uh, snares that if we're not cautious, if we're not if we have not been learned and taught, if we're ignorant, we will actually fall prey to so many different things that has been set up that may keep us from um, from evolving, if you would, to that level of intimacy that the Lord has uh, preordained for us. Lord God, I just take this moment right now and I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that everyone who's supposed to hear, Lord God, everyone that you have assigned, Lord God, to receive uh, this message, Lord God, I pray right now, Lord God, that there will be nothing, Lord God, that would hinder, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I honor you right now, Lord God, help us to live in his image, in your image, on purpose. Well, today, praise the Lord, there's something I want to talk to you all about, and it's something that I think just about every person may uh, ponder on at some time or another, if not several times throughout the day, and it's about love. I, I want to just deal with love, but not just in the um, mechanical way, if you would, but I really feel right now that even in this particular, in this particular juncture, if you would, God is, is, is calling me, I believe, to deal with several facets of how he wants to um, approach and even how to love on his people. And he wants us to remember what it was like when you had your first love. You know, I mean, remember, I, I was telling uh, some younger sons in our ministry, I was talking to them about, you know, when you remember your first crush. I mean, do, I mean, when you think about some of the things that you've experienced in life. Do you remember the first person that you really started liking? Do you remember when you felt like somebody really liked you and they were not ashamed to make it obvious? Um, the, believe it or not, even though when you really like someone or if you start feeling this crush, what is a crush? It's when you have this almost like an uncontrollable feeling where you want to know about someone and you're, 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 you're literally disappointed that you don't have the time or the opportunity, if you would, to find out more about the one whom has caught your attention. And we usually would say you have a crush on that person, like you're looking for that opportunity and the opportunity hasn't presented itself right. But um, but I want you to know that the Lord himself, he loves you. I want you to know the Lord has so much more than just a crush on you. See, one of the things is when you have a crush, you don't really know about the person but the Lord knows everything about you and he loves you so much in spite of where you are right now, in spite of what you've done and what you're what you're even going to do right now. But he wants you to begin to know him so that he can make an impact in your life. The Lord loves you so much. And, and what's happening is I want to just take this time right now to just actually minister and to just share a little bit on my first love. I realize now that when I was young, there was, you know, certain young ladies that I remember that I had a crush on and everything. And then even when I met my wife, oh, my God, my wife just I felt like she knocked my socks off. I remember I remember the, uh, the girlfriends that I had. I remember when I had a girlfriend that was longer than any other girlfriend before at that time, you know, and and, and now to come to a place where I can say. That the Lord was my only true love, my first love. Do you remember your first true love? I want to get into this word because I want us to come to a place where we can agree together and say, you know what? The Lord really is my first love. The Lord is. Why don't you say that with me? Say the Lord is my first love. Praise the Lord, because, you know, I need you to understand that he actually looks at us as his love. Remember, the Bible says that he loved us so much that he gave his only son. Think about it. We look at how much, you know, a parent will love their child. 
But the word says that he loved us so much that he gave up his child that he may receive us. That's a serious love. The Bible says that no, there was no greater love than this, than a man would lay down his life while you were yet, while we were yet sinners. Christ still died for us. Why? Because of love. Because of love. Let me tell you something. What I'm going to be talking to you about for the next few moments. I want you to know that if we had to compare it to the sports arena. I would have to venture to say that this race is not given to the swift. If I had to compare it to a battlefield. A place where wars are taking place. I need you to know that this battle is not given to the strong. But I need you to understand that the prize goes to the one who can endure until the very end. Until the very end. Watch this. If we want to deal with this right now, I want you, if you would, why don't you take out your Bible or even uh, turn to your uh, Bible app and your cell phone or on your iPad, whatever you have. And, and I want you to turn to Revelation chapter number two right now. Revelation, the last book of the Bible. I remember when I was young, people used to make it seem like he was afraid to go to the book of Revelation. People used to say people lost their minds reading Revelation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But wait a minute. This is a book that's written for me. This is something that's written for me. So I refuse to be afraid of reading and seeing what the Lord has to say. Because remember, if I'm his first love now, you know how like when you made some sacrifices and you feel as though the sacrifices that you made, you felt like what you got in return wasn't worthy of the sacrifice. Well, I need you to know that God is looking at us and God is saying, you started treating me the same way you treated that person that broke your heart. And the Lord is saying, I've never broke your heart. I want you to know I've been faithful to you. I want you to know when you felt all alone, I was right there with you. I want you to know when you were having those bad dreams, the Lord says, I was the one that woke you up out of the dream. I want you to know that right when that situation got so bad and you felt like you was going to die, I don't know why the Lord is leading me to deal with this right now. But there were certain dreams that you had that you were being tormented so much. And the Lord says, I was the one that said, wake up now. Praise the Lord. There were even some temptations that you wish you could have stayed asleep for. So you could have experienced it. And the Lord says, I'm the one that shook you and said, no, not anymore, because I don't want you to be into any more bondage than that which I have allowed. Because he says, I'm going to provide a way of escape for you. God says, it's because of my love that I have for you. And the Lord says, all I want is for you to begin to love me the way you did at first. I want you to begin to love me in a way that you understand that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. The Lord says, you are valuable to me. Praise the Lord. He says, you're valuable to me. What do you do? Watch this. What do you do when you feel like your best no longer requires sacrifice? Oh, my goodness. We're talking about returning to your first love. Isn't it amazing that we think the more we fall in love with someone or the more in love we feel with someone? A lot of times we feel like if we've earned that person love, the less we begin to work. We believe that I already did all the work at first. You remember the things that we did at the beginning? God is saying that's, you know. Don't you forget what you've done at the beginning. God says, I'm still calling you. The Bible says, I know your works. I know your patience. I know the times that you waited. I know the time you worked. I know the time you labored. He said, I know the times that you found out that people were lying and you wanted them to be true. I, I understand all these things. But the Lord says, the, the work that you did at the beginning he says, I need you to continue with a level of diligence. I need you to continue. He says, you know why? He says, because real love costs. We, we need to understand and we need to begin to tell 
people that love is not what you see on the media. Love is not what you think is, is, is the easy way out where people just give you what you want. Love costs. Love will cost you everything that you have. Why would you go through that? Why would you give up what you have? Because of love. You think, you think I'm not telling the truth? Check with somebody who loves gambling. Ask them what they're willing to lose behind gambling. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I don't even have to deal with that too much. Because whatever you love the most, you will give allegiance to. Praise the Lord. So we have fallen prey to this fallacy that makes us believe that when you love, you only do just enough. As if you feel like you've accomplished, like the, the hard work is over. God says, I want you to know the type of love I'm expecting of you is going to be consistent. Hallelujah. Receiving of my love and consistent, consistently, diligently us warding off those things that come to go to war against our love for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because believe it or not, a lot of times we're thinking that the best love is easy love. Oh, my goodness. Easy love. Can you think about those things that you felt like would be considered easy? Easy love. I need you to understand that there is no such thing as easy love anymore. Love is not easy. Love requires sacrifice. Love requires time. Love is not easily puffed up. Love is not arrogant. Hallelujah. Love requires sacrifice. I really need you to understand this. Love requires sacrifice. Love is not convenient. I know you're still looking for that convenient. It's not convenient. Love is not convenient. I need you to understand that love is not easily resolved where there's when there's issues that come up sometimes true love is not easily resolved sometimes you don't just get over things easily when you say that love is really in the picture you know when we think about one of the greatest examples of love if you look at just the way a mother feels about her own children you want to see what's love? Try to say something negative about a mother's child. Praise the Lord. I mean, I don't care. The, the, the child can be as wrong as two left shoes. You let someone try to challenge and see whether or not that mother's love is still alive. Praise the Lord. It's almost like trying to get a splinter out of your finger. You know how you, I remember my mom used to say, come here, boy, bring me a finger. I used to be like, oh, Lord, because, you know, you try to put a needle anywhere around a cut. You know, that just freaked me out. You, you try to touch, you try to deal with whether or not a mother still loves her child. That's worse than trying to take a needle, sticking it in an open wound. Because, you know, it's like an open wound. You feel everything. When it comes down to love, it's like you feel everything. Praise the Lord. So let's return. How much is it going to cost? What is it going to take? It's going to take everything. Jesus actually told Peter. He says, no man has left your father, your mother, your wife, house, land. He says, nobody has lost any of these things for nothing. God says, Jesus himself said, I will restore unto you. 100 times everything you lost. The Lord has said, that's because of my love for you. But then look at what Peter said. Peter said, the way Peter said, I'm demonstrating my love for you, Lord. Peter said, we left everything to follow you. Hallelujah. You wondering why is your relationship with God being challenged right now? Is he your first love? Is he, is he still your first love at this moment? You're going to be tested. There's going to be challenges that's going to come. 
in this life you shall receive tribulation. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. The Lord says, I've overcome the world. Like in so many words, he's saying that my love for you is so great. There is nothing that's going to stop the demonstration of my love for you. But I just need you to be strong, just like how Moses instructed Joshua the same way Joshua instructed the people. He says, be strong and a very, a very good courage. He says, everything that I've given unto you, he says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. God says, I need you to take this word and bind it upon the finger. Hallelujah. Tie it around your heart. David said, I took your word and I hid it within my heart that I might not sin against you. Why? Because I understand that I'm supposed to honor you as my first love. That's why the word says in Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God. In all of his righteousness, he said, and all these other things is going to be added. Why? Because it's a constant, hallelujah, cornonia. It's a constant reciprocation of, of receiving love and giving love. Praise the Lord. You think it's not true? You ask a husband or wife. You ask them both. You're looking for that love to come back and return. So if that's the case, you think the Lord is not expecting our love? Why do you think he lets us know even... With the Ten Commandments, he lets us know that he's jealous. Jealous of what? He says, my love. You're my first love. So now it's time for us to say, Lord, you're my first love. You're my first love. Hallelujah. When you're married, it's going to test everything that you have. Everything. Are you willing to lay those things down for love? For love. I know, I know a lot of times people saying, wait a minute, Pastor. Wait a minute, man of God. I hear what you're saying. and You don't understand. Wait a minute. I'm asking you right now. What type of love you think the Lord is expecting us to demonstrate? Praise the Lord. All I'm, all I'm suggesting. All I'm, I'm, I'm coercing you. I'm, I'm urging you. What does the word of the Lord has to say concerning that situation? Praise the Lord. If we would, let's let's just let's start getting into this word. If we would real quick, let's get out of Revelation real quick. Let's turn right now to the book of Deuteronomy. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter number uh, seven. Turn to Deuteronomy seven. And verse number seven. I want you to know, I want you to just choose to say this, say, I am a recipient of the Lord's love. Hallelujah. I really believe that I am a recipient of the Lord's love. I receive your love, Lord God. I receive your love, Lord God. Father, I got so many different things coming against me right now, but Lord, I receive your love. I got challenges coming against me, Lord God, but I receive your love. I know there's people who can't stand what I got to say. People act like they don't even like the, the ground that I walk on. But I receive your love, Lord God, because as much as you choose to love me, Lord God, you say that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You tell me, Lord God, to love you and to reverence you, Lord God, and you will begin to open up my understanding. Hallelujah. You tell me to love you over choice rubies. You tell me to love you over fine gold. So I choose right now to love you. I choose to focus on you with all of my heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look what he says in Deuteronomy 7 and 7. He says, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. God says, it's not because you did so much right. God says, I didn't choose you because you were so this or you were so that. Or because your parent did this or because you owned this business or because you had this possession. The Lord says, I didn't choose you because of that. He says, I set my love on you. He says, because I chose you. He says, but it wasn't because you did anything right. See, see, this is the place where we have to understand that it's by his mercy that we have not been consumed. Praise the Lord. That's why the Lord says he can't stand arrogance. He can't stand pride. 
That's why it says, humble yourself. It's not about you. He says, the Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people. Or, he says, but because you were the fewest of all people. Look what he says in verse number eight. He says, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep his oath, which he swore to your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, he says, the reason why you couldn't stay in bondage to the sin that you were connected in, he says, is because I promised your father. I promised. Hallelujah. Your forefathers, he says, you're, hallelujah, you're the fruit. But I promised your roots that I will be faithful to you. Oh, my goodness. He says this is the fulfillment of prophecy. This is the fulfillment of a commandment of love. He says, I swore to your fathers. He says, and the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. From the hand of the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Praise the Lord. He says, when you got out, you didn't just walk out on your own. The Lord says, I commanded the exit. The Lord says, I commanded the release. He says, this is the time. And I need you to know that this was by no accident. The Lord says that I brought forth, I brought you forth, I brought you forth, I brought you forth. Even somebody looking right now, the Lord says, I will bring you forth, I will bring you forth, I will bring you forth. He said, because I chose to love you. You were special to me. Hallelujah. And he says, I'm doing all this in efforts of getting you to love me back. The Lord says, I see a treasure in you. And I want you to see that treasure in you also. But I need you to understand that that treasure in you is not you. The Lord says, it's me. The word says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of his power may be seen in us. I want to just take this moment and just encourage you right now. Y'all, we need to understand that living in his image on purpose is nothing short. Hallelujah. It's not by accident. It's not something it's going to take the grace of God that we can begin to receive his love. Let, let's begin to close out the same way begin to say Lord I receive your love right now I receive your love right now begin to just 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 take this moment and begin to say Lord I exalt you right now I honor you I express my love to you right now Lord God Father you are worthy of all of the glory you are worthy of all of the honor and all of the praise let your word, Lord God, continue to be a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my pathway. Praise the Lord. Y'all, we have to end this telecast, but don't let it end your worship. Continue to seek the Lord and exalt him with your heart and continue to live in.